Are there any exciting developments being presented at the upcoming ASCO conference that you can share with us? Yeah, I think one of the most, you know, recent really exciting, there's there's many, um, it's hard to pick just one. I, as a medical oncologist, I am probably paying more attention to the phase three clinical trials um, in the more advanced disease setting, meaning for patients who have a metastatic cancer, cancer of the prostate that started in the prostate that spread to other parts of the body. Um, there are trials that show that the co that combination of effective drugs that we currently use in the latest stages of prostate cancer, metastatic prostate cancer, we are moving them earlier um, in the disease spectrum, meaning we're not waiting until the end when people are really sick, we're trying to use them earlier and we're trying to use them in combination with each other to improve the outcomes of men with advanced prostate cancer. So men with prostate cancer that has spread outside the prostate um, has actually now lived longer than they ever have ever before, which is really, really exciting. Um, we do need to be thinking about side effects, but some of the newest strategies are, for example, trying to understand how we can use immunotherapies more effectively. So many people may be aware that immunotherapies are manipulating the immune system um, is really effective in some types of cancers. Um, and they have different side effects um, than chemotherapy. Most of the time they have fewer side effects, but they occasionally can have pretty serious side effects. But as a general strategy, it's very exciting in oncology to say, can we encourage your own immune system, your defense system, your built-in defense system to be more effective in addressing cancer um, without as many of the side effects? If we could do that, we would really be um, in a much better place. And for prostate cancer, it hasn't historically been as effective, but many of the strategies now are trying to understand how can we manipulate the system and maybe give different combinations so that that works just as well as it does for some of the other cancers. That's number one. Number two is thinking about, you know, this idea of precision oncology or tailoring the treatment to the person's cancer based on the genetics of their cancer, genetics of the patient. Um, and we already have some examples now of how that's really exciting and effective. And I think then the third strategy that I'm, or the third approach that I'm really excited about is these drugs that are what we call um, targeted radiation therapies, or there's the drug called lutetium that is likely to be approved soon. Um, where there, um, the, there's a, a, ra a, a radiation molecule that is linked or tagged to basically a homing device. So it's an antibody, which is something that is made by the body's immune system, but basically homes in on any cell in the body that expresses this tag called prostate-specific membrane antigen. So you're kind of taking a smart, a smart delivery of radiation just to those cells and not to the other cells. So it's um, hopefully not gonna have as many side effects, but it's gonna be really effective. So those are the kind of maybe um, in a high level overview, some of the things I'm really excited about. Um, and, and always there's more progress um, and more to talk about. So hopefully I can tell you about it again. Thank you. I find the information that you are providing about smart medicine very, uh, informing, and I think it can be used to help promote education in the community when we want to talk about prevention. Because when we talk about um, cancer, there's this there's this overwhelming feeling about it, and there's sometimes a feeling of no hope. But when we put out more information about there's ways that that treatment can be targeted and where we can do prevention if we find out early treatments can be different and you can continue on with your life, I think that that makes a huge difference. And the more information that is provided about smart technologies for medical treatment is going to make a difference in the area of educating patients and caregivers about prevention and the importance of prevention. Absolutely. I mean, I think actually the most exciting thing about what I do is not necessarily the targeted precision treatments that I mentioned. What I get most excited and passionate about is the fact that if those mutations are genetic, 
then what can we do for the brothers, for the sons, for the nephews that can change things so that they don't have to have those kind of late stage medications that we find the cancer early, we cure the cancer so that it's a non-issue. And I think that's possible. We have to start somewhere, but I think, you know, we can definitely see benefit at the, at the advanced disease setting, but I, I'm most excited and hopeful for the earlier, the, the, the sort of people who might be at risk where we can do something, just as you said, screening, prevention, you know, knowledge can be power. Knowledge doesn't need to be a burden.